Hello and welcome. My name is Stefan Poschik from CHC Corporate Health Consulting. And today I have a very interesting um, guest in my interview. And we are going to talk about diversity and inclusion. Just to start with this, we are a consulting company who is focused on employee engagement and uh, company culture. And I am personally um, convinced that the employers of the future will have to take care of their employees because the only way to be a really, really cool employer and interesting company to work for will be that you have a great culture. And so I'm really happy to have you in my show. So welcome, Floris van der Weid. <laughs> Pleased to meet and uh, thank you very much for the uh, invitation to be here. That's yeah, awesome. I am. Yourself. Yes. <laughs> I'm a clinical psychologist that's been in industry for 30 years, basically HR all my life, uh, and have uh, dealt with quite a couple of cases on uh, diversity and inclusion also, as you can imagine, international companies. So uh, presently living in South Africa, but I've worked for 28 years in Switzerland. So also the internationality I'm bringing with. That's really interesting. And we will deep dive into this topic in a couple of minutes. So let me start with the first question, Floris. Um, what is your personal definition of diversity and inclusion? Yeah, good question, Stefan, because a lot of people think the diversity and inclusion is to have uh, different uh, genders in one team or also different uh, nationalities. Sometimes it's even drawn down to the skin of the, uh, the color of the skin. You have people of color in the team. Uh, and my understanding of diversity inclusion is to have different mentalities, different thinking patterns, different points of view, different perspectives in one team. Now, having said that, it is very difficult if people come from a similar background, similar area, to have different perspectives. But we can just imagine that people who come from different status of life, different uh, sexual orientation, can have very much different perspectives as well. And that, to me, is also diversity and inclusion is how do we include people with disabilities, for instance, um, in a team. So it's not just the typical gender or um, color of skin diversity. We can really think of people in very different other thinking patterns that bring in the team a different perspective. That's really interesting. So let's stay in this uh, topic a little bit. When a company, um, where, where can a company start when they want to implement diversity and inclusion or probably when they want to use this um, for their employees and also as an advantage as an employer? Well, I, I think the starting point is not with recruiting diversity. The starting point is to get the mentality inside the company ready to accept the, uh, diversity. Because if you, uh, employ, a, for instance, a, a gay person and the manager can't deal with a gay person or the company culture is, is very abrupt uh, towards uh, gay people, that person is not going to survive. Or if you employ a person with disability mm -hmm. and the company is not ready to accept that a person with disability can do the same job than anybody else, that person will not uh, be successful in the company. So I very much believe that uh, inclusion diversity should start with um, assessing and uh, challenging the mentalities inside the company. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, of course, has to do a lot with the security of the people inside the company, because the more secure a person is inside him or herself, the easier you accept other uh, points of view, other perspectives, or other types of people. Uh, so that is where I would start. Okay. And what is your, your experience in the marketplace? Did you see this um, mindset already in a lot of companies? Or uh, did you see uh, problems or companies where they don't have this mindset yet? 
Well, I've seen both. I've seen companies where, um, and we we know it, Siemens uh, is a very good uh, example where they celebrate the, the gay month uh, and they put the flags on and a lot of companies will put the um, uh, gay flag uh, during the gay month on uh, the buildings, project the colors. Uh, so the, it's an open acceptance there are also with Siemens, they've got a, a gay club where people uh, get together and celebrate um, uh, certain uh, events together. So I think those type of companies that are really openly uh, inviting uh, diversity of thinking and diversity of, of also companies that are very proud to to appoint people with disabilities and put it out uh, there and uh, recruiting people specifically with disabilities. I, those companies are doing very well because it's a statement inside the company. The managers has to live with that statement. The, the company is creating the culture and the environment in the mental state uh, so that people can go about with diversity and if somebody then do not accept that diversity he or she is rather out of the dance or out of the tune and and will uh, look a bit uh, upon from the other employees but I've also seen companies who is trying and then they appoint I've got one example where a company have appoint a, a very diverse team uh, different nationalities, different uh, people of color, uh, sexual orientation. And then what happened was they couldn't integrate those people among each other. So it was little islands in one team. Each of the persons have been totally individual, left individualized in the team. And that team held for about two years and then broke apart because the manager couldn't integrate the different perspectives. Now that to me is token uh, diversity and inclusion. So you appoint people, but you don't integrate the different perspectives. And then people just realize uh, I'm all by myself with my different perspective, but it doesn't matter. I'm, I did, my perspective doesn't matter. It's just so that the company can tell we've got a diverse team in the company. So. That to me is worse than rather the other company that say, look, we are a local company. We want to have things local. We do not believe in diversity. We're not going to spend money on diversity and we want to keep our local culture. Then I rather feel more comfortable when a company makes such a statement than a company trying to project a image of diversity with different people appointed and the people are not heard in the company okay that's a really cool example um or or experience you 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 just told uh, you just told us um do you do you think it will be an advantage for employers in the future when they celebrate diversity and inclusion absolutely no matter if absolutely. it's a small or a big company absolutely absolutely i think just by celebrating diversity and inclusion in, in different ways. Um, it's not just a great um, external statement to, to the market that you are open, but also internal, it makes the people more open to say, okay, I can and I may think different. Um, I may also express my own opinions. And uh, if the company celebrate that, then I will feel more open or more secure to open up myself as well. So in that case, yes, I very much believe that companies should go with open statements and celebrate diversity. Okay, very that, much. That, that's really good, yeah. Can you name one or two um, good examples or best practice um, you, you know of, um, additional to Siemens you already mentioned? And yeah, uh, what exactly they did in the company to achieve this? Well, um, I think if you can get, and I know uh, the, the name of the company is not coming up uh, right now in my mind, but they are a company in San Francisco, 
which is working on high technology. But what they've done, they actually um, appointed the, with intention people of color and people of different sexual orientation in their management team. Now, by just appointing uh, consciously people uh, with different views in the management team, you immediately get a different perspective of the company. And then uh, every time something is coming up uh, with a different perspective, it can be reflected in the management team. Uh, and somebody in the management team understand where the person comes from or what's been said. And I think that type of uh, wider perspective in the management team that exists just because there's, uh, there are differences uh, or diversity in the management team gives the company also an opportunity of broadening their minds, thinking more creative, and, and being more open for other for new and other ideas. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a that's a really interesting approach. Um, so let's let let me ask you let me ask you one more question, probably a very personal question. So you told us, and I know that you were born and raised in South Africa. So you are a white person born and raised in South Africa. Then you traveled almost the whole world um, with your, uh, in, in, in your business life and you were living in Switzerland, so a neutral com uh, country um, in, in Europe. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, you went back to South Africa. So um, what is your personal experience with diversity and inclusion? Um, did you make good experiences or were there some situations where you were confronted with ugly situations too? Thank you. And I think that is exactly when I grew up in South Africa, I always had contacts with other uh, races or other ethnical groups. And my friends always said to me, Flores, it's not the overt uh, discrimination that worries us because one can talk about it, one can um, make a statement against of it, but it's this undercurrent uh, discrimination and, and uh, statements that uh, are being uh, spoken out. And I didn't really understood what they were talking about till I arrived in Switzerland, where I realized not being Swiss, you are being dealt differently with. Now, nobody tells you you are different or nobody tells you, look, you're not Swiss and therefore you are differently dealt with. But I had a couple of instances um, on, on salary, which I had to correct. I spoke about it on privileges uh, in the business environment where people are being uh, uh, invited to places or uh, being asked to, to rather present the company because they are Swiss and, and not uh, I'm not Swiss. And once I started to address those things, I realized what my friends have said to me in South Africa. There is a subtle um, discrimination which you can't pinpoint, but you just feel it. And you know it is there, but you can't address it either. And it was only when I gathered some courage to talk about it, to openly address it, that it was corrected. And, and I think for a number of people to get that courage to openly address your uncomfortness that you feel, but you've got no proof of it, uh, I think is, is sometimes need a lot of courage. But if you don't do it, you get caught up in those feelings, negative feelings, uh, and it's not solved. Mm -hmm. So yes, I, I think my, through my experience um, globally, I'm very sensitive on what do I say and what I don't say, but also project with my um, attitude, with what I allow, don't allow. And that is why I want to come back to where we started with my definition. My definition of diversity is a mindset. It's not on how many uh, different genders and how many women you've uh, pointed to the mix of male or female on the management board. That's not diversity. It is 
whether people are open to accept and listen to other people who have a different opinion, a different mind, uh, and bring different perspectives. That's a really, really cool definition of diversity. So thank you so much, Floris, for sharing your personal experience and also for answering these questions. And we will go so much more into depth into, this de in, into these topics at uh, the event in November. So I'm really, really looking forward to talk about these um, topics much more in detail with you. So um, if somebody wants to connect already with you before our event is taking place, how can they connect with you? Where can they find you or reach you? Absolutely. My email address, Fluris, F-L-O-O-R-I-S, at fundervault.ch or through my website, uh, www.fundervault.ch. Welcome to contact and let's uh, talk about the topic. That's great. We are going to tag you in the, uh, in the, in the interview and also put your website and your email in, in the comments. So Floris, thank you so much for taking the time and I'm looking forward to the conversation we have at the event. So um, to all our audience, have a great day. Enjoy um, the time and a lot of success. And we see you at the HRV tonight in a couple of weeks. Take care. Bye. Thank you, Stefan. Mm-hmm. <laughs>